Infantile spasms is a really uncommon seizure disorder in very young children. It usually starts in the first year of life and is very subtle often in its appearance, sometimes with just a little forward flexion that sometimes looks like just a little startle or something like that. But it carries a much greater impact than just having a little muscle spasm. This is a really serious kind of epilepsy. So it's really important for parents to be the one who recognize what's going on. That child needs to get to a child neurologist because they're the ones who are most capable of taking care of this child. And the first thing that's done is an electroencephalogram, a brainwave test. One of the really common patterns we see with infantile spasms on the EEG is called hypsarrhythmia, which is really a kind of very disorganized, very high voltage abnormality on the EEG. The brain is really disturbed and that child cannot really be aware normally of all the things going on around them so the opportunity for learning is kind of getting away from them. You must get completely rid of the spasm. You cannot see any more of those little jerks and the EEG cannot have that hypsarrhythmia pattern anymore. You have to have both of those gone to give the child the chance for the best development. Some of the disorders are problems with the brain that even if we stop the spasm, the child's still going to have development problems. But we need to figure out which one it is because many times that will guide the therapy that we would want to give for this child. The primary issues that concern families are, will this affect my child's development? And then the most important issue to them is, can we treat this and what's the best way to treat it? The best treatment for infantile spasms, first of all, is to start the treatment early. That's really important. Then the next important thing is, what is the most appropriate medication for this child? About a third, maybe, of the children have what's called cryptogenic infantile spasms. Most of us who treat these patients frequently will pick one of the two Vigabitrin or ACTH drugs. If the child is in that cryptogenic category, that is the group of children that we just did not find a cause and this child looks to be otherwise a good possibility of developing normally, most, I think, would pick the ACTH therapy because it might give them a better chance for the most normal development. On the other hand, if the child has one of the disorders that's associated with it called tuberous sclerosis, that child's probably going to do best on the Vigabitrin. I've had children who've had infantile spasms go to college, so some of them will do spectacularly well and they will just go back to whatever was going to be their life as though this had never happened. It's a little bump in the road for them. When you get the opportunity to really save the future of a child, it's about the most exciting thing that can happen. It kind of makes all the tough ones worth it to get a chance to really do something really important for a kid.